Um, this is a quick video on my model um, 1591, um, a singer, a, an antique singer machine. And a lot of people claim that these can sew through leather without a problem. And I've sewn heavy fabrics with it before, but never leather. I actually have to make something out of leather, a small thumb guard. And so I'm going to put this to the test. This is a scrap piece of the leather, and it's about a, a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's, it's fairly thick. So right now I have the machine just um, threaded with normal cotton thread. It's not extra strong or anything. It, I, it's just regular cotton thread. And this the machine goes through one layer of leather without a problem. When I make the thumb guard, I'm going to have to go through two layers of this leather, and when you fold it over, I mean, that is, um, well, it's two sixteenths, but it's, fa it's fairly thick. This is uh, my thumb guard that I have to sell, to sew, sorry, and I had put a pin in here just to hold it over the way I need to make it. And I can't get the pin out by hand. I have to use a pair of pliers to pull the pin out. And so it will be interesting to see if this machine will easily go through two layers of leather. If it's that hard to get a pin in and out of it, and I'm not sure how easy it'll be to sew it. And look at that, it goes right through it. It does go right through it. It went right through both layers of leather. Now this is a thicker um, fabric than I would ever put really under any of my machines, to tell you the truth. I thought I was going to be sewing this by hand. Not only could you break a needle, but um, if the machine can't handle something like this, then you're forcing the machine to work harder than it, than it should or than it wants to. Now, so that's how the thumb guard is going to go, um, and this is for my carving. But now I want to put um, probably a piece of elastic at the bottom. Um, so now I'll have one layer of leather and um, one layer of elastic. The thumb guards that I've purchased uh, commercially have elastic at the bottom. Um, or at, at the center to hold them in place, but I think I had to trim the length of that anyway to fit my hand, and I think what I'm going to do is use a piece of leather at the bottom, at, well, it's the bottom of the thumb guard, instead of elastic, and just make it long enough so that my thumb can easily go in and out of the thumb guard when I put it on. I mean, you don't need elastic for really any other reason. And I have I do have a band-aid on my on my thumb right now for a cut on this side. But see, now all I have to do is measure how wide I need it which is right about there. Now, that's how I would like to do it. Um, 
sew it like that. I'm not sure I can fit that under the presser foot, but I'm going to try. It's kind of a tight fit. The other way to do it is just flat like that, which will leave a little bit of an edge on this side. And I think it's just easier to do it that way. Now, thumb guards are only a couple of dollars, um, but then people get like six dollars shipping. And um, when you can make one yourself, uh, this is scrap leather. It, well, it's scrap leather. I bought it from a store that specializes in tanning and drums and um, leather craft. And I think I bought um, a quarter of a, a sheepskin. Um, I'm pretty sure it's sheepskin. It might be cowskin. But it's, they considered it a, a piece of scrap leather. And, um, I mean, I have so much of it, I can use it to make lots of little things like this. So, doing this uh, with my sewing machine, I wasn't sure it could handle that thickness of leather, but it handled it without a problem. And there's my thumb guard, and I saved myself about $10.